So you're gonna try to draw what you see in, you know, 2B and the same 2B down here. If you need to, you can break it down even more. So I can, it doesn't have to be perfect. I can break that down into half both directions. I can do the same thing down here. Really lightly, because you, like I said, you usually don't want to see the grid in the end. And then it helps me see like, okay, this crosses the line just slightly to the right of the halfway point. And this is about halfway down between or a little over. So it helps you figure out where things go. So you start by drawing the bigger shapes and then you're gonna work towards the smaller details. So I kind of have like the big shapes. Now I need to start getting the contours. Like I have this kind of stripe that goes down. So I see that it starts about a quarter of the way over here. So I'm gonna give myself a little mark. And then it's gonna end almost all the way down here in the corner. So first I'm just gonna draw kind of like down the middle where I see that it curves slightly over here and then it's gonna curve down. So I'm doing this very, very lightly. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start to draw like the width of it. So I see it, the shape varies a little bit. It's kind of irregular. And I mean, this is, this is good to help you out, but you don't have to be a perfectionist. Like, is anybody gonna be able to tell if this stripe isn't shaped exactly like that? No, you're just kind of getting the overall feel of it and then you still do your own style a bit. But it's to help you, it's a good tool to be able to pull out of your pocket when you need to. Okay, so I'm real lightly doing this. I don't wanna do anything dark until I'm positive it's in the right spot. Down here, I see this even like crosses over a little bit, so it gets quite a bit wider. So after you have all of your big shapes drawn out, then you would go back and practice your rendering a bit. So I see this is pretty darn dark right here. I just have a 2B pencil, but I could certainly switch if I wanted to. So it's almost solid black. So I'm starting to do that and I'm leaving some of the little white spots that I see up here. So I'm just leaving the white paper show through on those. And then I can start getting like the texture on the stem, kind of building that up. Oh, look, there's a little bit of stippling. I can see that would be a good technique to use up here on the top of the stem. So it's kind of porous a bit. Um, I also would want to erase my little extra marks. I don't need those anymore. But after you have it planned out, then you'll start practicing your rendering. It's pretty linear here. I can do, I can switch back between textures or between techniques. So I'm kind of doing rendering, but then where there's more texture, maybe I don't want it to be perfectly smooth because I want to show that. So I can come back and do a little bit of scumbling or some hatching or something. But you're just trying to make it match what you see. So before you worry about shading, try to get like the big shapes drawn out. So that starts right around here. This corner's almost touched. So it's gonna go all the way over here. The other part starts skinny, gets thicker. And that's a little past a quarter of the way here. So yeah, you can go ahead and start drawing out the shapes that you see. Remember to look for where the light and dark changes. Get your contours there. You said the big shapes are, uh, are easier. Yeah, like you don't want to, some people I've seen them do it where they like will render each little bit. I prefer to get the bigger shapes sketched out first so I can make sure they match up right before I get super detailed. I wanna make sure that everything fits together how it's supposed to before I do shading.